Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me with this crazy idea that I've been having. And I think it's been kind of co-inspired between conversations that the three of us have had together and separately. But um, yeah, I guess I just, I got really... Sammy and I were having a really wonderful conversation about um, the sustainability of business, the sustainability of the natural food industry, um, supply chain, and and maybe sustainability is not even the right word, but we're ending that, you know, we're approaching the end of that. And so what we kind of, when we started talking about solutions together, um, you know, this idea of the yoga of business really started to come to fruition. And um, the three of us have been, um, Samantha and Rita and I have been um, connected essentially from the beginning through yoga. Um, and we all have, you know, practiced uh, under the same teacher. We were introduced under the same teacher, um, Rita's mom. And so all of our roots are connected with Brenda. And um, then we've all been on these adventures in different parts of the country and the world. Um, and actually still, you know, Rita's West Coast, Sammy's East Coast, and I'm right in the middle. Um, and it's been really cool to come back together this way um, in realizing how much of our yoga roots you know, shared roots has really navigated choices we've made through our whole life. And then once again, you know, like the way the roots kind of come together again, here we are um, sharing those roots through um, business. So yeah, I guess we have, we've been discussing the yamas and the niyamas particularly. I mean, this, the subject is really vast. So I think really quickly, I'll just introduce the yamas and the niyamas if you're not familiar with them. Um, and then we can kind of share each of us how the yamas and the niyamas are applied currently to our life and specifically pertaining to our business. Um, so I should have maybe made myself not the admin in this. Um, okay, so the yamas are nonviolent, truthfulness, non-stealing, self-restraint, and non-hoarding. And then the niyamas are cleanliness, contentment, zest and zeal, self-study, and dedication. And the, the, um, what they are essentially are, you know, like a moral compass and, and ethical disciplines for, you know, on the yogi path that we kind of evaluate every situation we come through. Um, so without too much more, um, maybe I'll pass it over to Rita and she can kind of talk a little bit about how um, the yoga of business is filtering in her life. Thanks, Lindsay. I so love the subject and this collaboration and we've been speaking to how our business and our work together has so in alignment with our yoga practice and our process throughout the years so it's really fun to drop in this way and maybe I'll just start with the first um, niyama which is is cleanliness um, and specifically in the business that we're all working together, we're, we're working on cleaning up the environment. We're working on restoring our soils and our ecosystems, because if we don't have a healthy ecosystem, we don't have healthy bodies. And then we're also working on cleaning up our body, you know, from the inside out. And that translates into everything we do, you know, and even just preparing for this call, I was like, wow, I just need to clean up my space. Um, and so it does just kind of translate into every aspect of just laying those basic foundations um, and then really applying that at a deeper level. So I'll let Sammy speak to, to cleanliness as well. Yeah, of course. So cleanliness, I, I definitely, um, Rita, thank you for sharing. And Lindsay, thanks for the awesome introduction, first and foremost. Um, 
Cleanliness in thoughts, words, and deeds. Um, and like Rita said, we are cleaning ourselves physically and on a cellular level from the inside out. And one of the main um, points that I wanted to try to bring into this discussion is like, not only how we ourselves individually embody these disciplines, but how we cultivate them in others. And this is a really important one for me. So I feel like dedicating myself and my life to helping others attain cleanliness in their thoughts, words, and deeds is like, it's huge. That's a huge priority of mine. Um, and that also translates to our intellect, right? And our minds, because when we clean up our bodies, our minds follow, um, one affects the other. And so that in turn affects how we spend our time and what we do with our lives. And so it's all sort of building on this foundation, like Rita mentioned, of like, let's clean ourselves individually and let's help others clean up our bodies on a cellular level and the rest will take care of itself. Um, and so BKS Iyengar says that pure food is also necessary. Apart from cleanliness of the preparation of the food, it is also necessary to observe purity in the means by which one procures it. Character is molded by the type of food we take and how we eat it. And so that's from Light on Yoga from BKS Iyengar, but basically it, it speaks to that. Like, are our soils being regenerated? You know, are we focusing on the cleanliness in every step of the process of our food production? So that's what I would add to that. Thank you, Rita. Oh, I always learn so much from both of you. I love it. <laughs> um, I think cleanliness to me, you know, I'm such a practical, functional person. So I see it most obviously as our cellular cleanliness. Um, and if we, if our cells are carrying around toxins from our environment and we're storing that, our bodies aren't absorbing nutrients the way that um, they need to be, you know, absorbed to function. And the, our brain is, you know, one of the organs, so our brain isn't functioning. So if our, if our, body isn't being nourished and our brain isn't thinking to its ability, how do we have the capability to solve these gigantic global problems and to have the concepts of, you know, the similarities between our micro problems and the macro problems and how we are all in, entwined in this. So through my experience of, of cleaning myself, and, um, you know, purifying my body, I have been able to access my mind in ways I never thought I could. And that's what inevitably has led me to turning, just cleaning my, myself into helping other people do the same and turning it into a fulfilling business. Um, yeah, I think I, I'm going to just add one too. I want, I'd like to also talk about zest and zeal because I think this translates really perfectly and we have um, kind of called ourselves the zest and zeal team um, but zest and zeal is excitement for the subject and I think this is pretty much manifesting exactly what that means um, and every time I have any kind of connection with with anyone in my team I it's it's always excites me and it's it's I've always lived by the um, kind of the rule to have conversations with passionate people because no matter what the person's passionate about, you're going to get inspired from them. So having passionate people in a shared interest, just it's like total saturation. <laughs> heck yes. Heck yes. Zest and zeal. I mean, to me, that comes back to passion, lighting up your internal fire, like what stokes you out. Also, what makes you cry? You know, what, what's your, why, what are you really passionate about in this world? Um, and I think it's so important to tap into and tune into that because 
that's part of being fully alive, right? Which to me, being fully alive comes back to presence. <laughs> How present are we in our bodies? You know, and that does come back to that cleanliness, that clarity in our body does create that clarity of mind, um, which creates those clarity of passions, right? And that zest and zeal. So they really do build off of each other. And like Lindsay said, what lights me up the most is not only being in alignment with my like deeper values, the things that connect to my heart, but doing that in community. Um, and I, I never have epiphanies on my own. Like I have epiphanies when I'm in relationship with someone or something in my life. Um, and I just find that this group dynamic, this model of business that's based in collaboration instead of competition is just so valuable. And it, and it lights my fire, you know, listening to people's stories, their testimonials and their health, their testimonials and their business and their personal like upgrade and transformation of their life, you know, um, being able to create a larger impact like that fuels my fire. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Rita. Um, yeah, and for me, it's very similar. It's definitely that like the root, right? The root of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so it, you know, zest and zeal is tapas and tapas is a burning effort under all circumstances to achieve a goal in life. That is fire, right? That builds character. BKS says a life without tapas is like a heart without love. I mean, could you imagine what is the point of living without this? So it's a lack of a selfish motive and it's unshakable faith in what you're doing, right? And this is <laughs> like bigger than us. It keeps us on track. It keeps us honest, transparent and courageous, lit, unstoppable, you know? And this is something that we cross pollinate with each other and we encourage and we support and our community generates this on its own and it's it's total magic um and this is absolutely the root of everything for me so it's a big one sammy which one what what do you think out of the yamas and the niyamas what's Firing aside, obviously, zest and zeal fires you up, no pun intended, but what else? <laughs> you want to pick one that's calling? Um, yeah, sure. I would say um, self-study. Mm. And I feel like there is um, so much crossover with these, obviously, like one feeds the other. Um, but this is like, to me, this is like, um, educating yourself on yourself. It's like finding the divinity within yourself. Um, it's like the cultivation of your unique genius. Um, and so when I was actually reading over this this morning, it was like, it, it's really profound. It's, um, it's like reading your own life book while writing it and revising it all at the same time. Um, and it cultivates and honors, like, like I said, that divinity within yourself. And it relates so heavily with what we do. Like we are in the business, like Rita said, of sharing our story and sharing other stories. And that's highlighting the unique genius that we all have to give. Um, and we cultivate our gifts by tapping into the greater awareness of the universe and through yoga, through alignment, through creating space, we are able to start to see um, the parts of ourselves that tap us in and connect us to the greater. Um, and I really feel like this is huge. You know, it's like our jobs are to take people on transformations and we can't take them anywhere that we haven't been. And so it's so important to take this concept, this like ethos of diving into ourselves and learning all that there is to learn and figuring out all of those walls and breaking down all of the barriers and the stories and all of the, I mean, there's so many crossovers to the, uh, to the other yamas and the niyamas, but um, 
it is through self-study that we um, that we discover our zest and zeal, you know, um, that we understand cleanliness of thoughts, words, and deeds, that we um, that we gain a greater awareness um, in collaboration with others. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> this is so fun. These are such rich topics. Um, yeah, and just to speak on self-study as well, like, I think that's been maybe the, one of the most important foundational principles <laughs> in my life continuously. And in yoga, that self-study is so much of an inward study, right? You're going inward infinitely. <laughs> and it's like, how far can you go into those depths of self-study? And through yoga, we're using our own body to, to find that awareness. Um, you know, you know, even just like your hands and your feet and extending your spine, we're getting that feedback from our body to learn a deeper innate intelligence. And then we're able to take that off the mat and translate that into life, right? And so if you can master one thing, you can master everything <laughs> or how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? So you can translate that wisdom that you're gaining from your internal practice and translate that into your business. And to me, my business growth, especially in this last couple of years, self-study has been the foundational principle that has helped my business to grow exponentially. <laughs> um, and it's so rewarding and fulfilling because in order to grow in business, we literally have to become someone new. So in this, we're helping people to develop their voice and their leadership and their ethics and their values and live in alignment with their truth, which is so badass. Um, and when you're stepping into one level of leadership, it's like, it requires a whole new skill set. It requires thinking about life in a different way. It requires being able to find solutions um, and being able to hold many truths, you know, in one space. So I love this self-study because um, with every single phase of growth in my business, it's because I've done internal growth to match that. And then I do some more internal growth and then my business grows externally. And then I do some more internal growth. So this continuous process of evolution and self-study is, is what lights my fire. I mean, I will forever be a student because I just love learning and exploring and looking from new perspectives. And, and what's really fascinating about this subject to me is, is it is infinite, you know, in yoga, we're going infinitely inwards and, and then that allows us to relate to our external world at a deeper level, right? Have a deeper relationship. Um, and with this business, it's like, I get to a, a new level of growth that I didn't even think was possible. And then all of a sudden I'm like, my brain opens and my mind opens and I'm like, oh, well, if that's possible, what else is possible? And then I get there and I'm like, oh, wait, that's just the starting point. What else is possible? So it's just this continuous um, expansion and exploration through self-study. Oh, I love that. And I think um, both, of, both of what you, each of you spoke to, um, there's so much, you know, so much that's resonating with me and, and kind of where I'm, my mind is at, um, but again, you know, practical Lindsay here, um, and thinking about just how, um, sorry about the noise in the background, um, how we learn, you know, yoga, the reason why we study yoga on our sticky mat and why we put our hands on the floor and it's imperative that we rise our sit bones is not necessarily because we want to actually move our sit bones, but it's because we want to access the nervous pathways that allow us to think about rising our sit bones, to consider that we have sit bones, to raise our awareness and our, our proprioception, that, that awareness of what we can't really fully comprehend you know, I can see my hands, I can move my hands, but you know, my back body, I'll never be able to see that, but I, I trust it's there. I'm aware it's there. And I think so much of 
um, you know, we, as we age, we kind of, we're creatures of habit, right? So we get stuck and set in our ways, our, our bodies become set in it just the same way our minds do. And through a practice, a physical practice of asana, we can, we can maintain that malleability and find new um, new pathways or restore new pathways and that's all we're trying to do in our business is figure out new ways to communicate the same message and find find new ways to have conversations um, that we have we haven't done before and so you know a huge part of me um, of my, you know, business practice is actually having the asana practice and returning to the mat and going through those same points of balancing the awareness of placing my palms down with the same pressure as I place my feet and, and building on that and never taking, losing sight of each of those points, but continuing to add. And I think that's, that's what, leadership becomes is just this awareness of all the little parts and not losing sight of you know where we're headed but also making sure that every every piece is is moving forward you know it's like extreme parenting <laughs> you know like if you, you have thousands of little duckies and you're you know duck mama and you need to get all the duckies to move you don't you know you need to remember all your little duckies names and you need to be able to make sure they're all waddling they all ate you know so bringing it back to you know how how self-study creates a ripple effect through just through your life and into your business and knowing that, you know, when to not take things personally, but realize that's an opportunity for me to grow, you know, whether I, I shift my language about it or shift my internal language about it. Um, I just think it's, it's kind of that checkpoint for refinement and keeps the mind fresh and keeps us young. I love that. <laughs> yeah. On to make how these foundations are so applicable. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, just to the bigger picture of, of, our, of the yoga path, wh where we've been studying, the yamas and the niyamas are the first two, you know, in, in traditional India, um, Indian study, yamas and niyamas are taught before asana, before the poses are even taught, because it's imperative that we know all of in ourselves what what we're supposed to be feeling or not feeling um and and how to tell if you're doing it right like how how do how do you know if when you're doing a back bend and it feels uncomfortable are you feeling violence or is it just discomfort and moving through you know moving through something that needs to be moved so they're the prerequisites of yoga. That's what Brenda always has taught us, you know? So, so being, being very um, cognizant of all the yamas and the niyamas before moving to the posture. So if we approach our business this way and we're, we're you know, evaluating every decision we make through our business and all the conversations that we have through our business based on the yamas and the niyamas, then alignment just seems to fall into place. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I want to speak to this niyama of dedication, because um, I think that's such an interesting one as well. And, and when I think to it from like a yoga perspective, it's like when I'm go to the mat, if I'm going on the mat to do a yoga practice to, I don't know, like just get healthier, you know, that's, that's an awesome, you know, way of approaching it and yet if I'm like wow I'm gonna dedicate this practice to my mom <laughs> or to something outside of myself it brings this whole new level of of beauty and reverence and um it almost brings me to tears right because it's not like you're just doing this action to tone your booty or get stronger muscles or whatever all of a sudden you're doing it 
in relationship with something or someone or dedication to something. And it brings this depth of beauty and connection and purpose. And I feel that all of us really hold that in our business, you know, like our business is so selfless, like, yes, we're, we do it for those foundational reasons of making an income in the world, you know, that's foundational. And yet there's a much larger, deeper purpose, um, that we're all speaking to. And I know it's slightly different for, for all of us, but some of those like core principles for me is stewarding the earth, you know, helping people find financial freedom, um, that community, that collaboration, that connection. So dedicating it to something larger than myself, you know, helping others to thrive and be healthy. Um, it gives it, it makes it so that like you were talking about, Lindsay, I don't take things personally. <laughs> like if this isn't for, if this isn't for someone, awesome. No worries. <laughs> Great. You do you. And yet those that this can really support, we're here for you, you know? So um, I love this element of dedication and bringing that into our daily lives and our, and our businesses. <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the things that I was thinking while you were talking, Rita, is that like dedication helps you stay dedicated. It helps you show up every day. You know, mm -hmm. it helps you like with in your practice of your your vision or your mission or your purpose. Um, repeatedly showing up is like the key to embodiment of your dreams or manifestation. Um, and so I feel like, like it is this act of dedication that keeps us all crystal clear on our mission, like having that single pointed focus comes through dedication. So it's like this cycle that feeds itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's very true. Oh, that's rad. Um, I think uh, at some point I must have made a vow to the mother earth that I will do everything in my ability to make sure that the, you know, the people, myself, my family, the people around me um, are as, you know, doing everything we can to be harmonious and grateful and giving back. Um, out of gratitude because of you know everything she's done for us so I think I have completely dedicated you know everything I'm doing towards that you know just bringing it, it's it's like really you talk about the why that makes you cry all the time you know and I just like sometimes I look at landscapes on this planet and it just I cannot believe how blessed I am to live to get to be experiencing it and um that's, you know, when, when we see ourselves in that landscape, we see ourselves as just as much of that landscape as the trees and the flowers and, you know, the elements, there, there is no way we could be doing any harm. And I think um, through, you know, through my passion of, you know, recreation and being in the mountains and, and you know, being with the plants and being in the dirt, the, this, you know, that passion, that dedication, and now having this beautiful skeleton of a vehicle, just to jump on and fill up with all of, of my passion. It's been, oh, it's just such a blessing. And, and it, Sam, exactly what you're saying. It's like, well, now, you know, this is why I've been hugging trees my whole life. And now I have this, you know, this thing I can dedicate to and, you know, help people to, to find their own passion and, and their own dedication. And so it is, it's such a regenerative gift dedication, you know, which is really at the core of, of what we're doing um, with regenerative health and regenerative business and, just giving back and how that fills your own cup up and gives, allows you to give more back. So it's, yeah, very, um, domino effect. Mm -hmm. So good. 
Which one's inspiring you, Sammy, right now? What's inspiring me right now? Or which uh, yama or niyama? <laughs> well, I've been thinking a lot about nonviolence, actually. Um, and what this is, is really just love. <laughs> it's as simple as love. But I see it in so many ways, right? Like I see it as eating plants versus animals. Um, I see it as love and appreciation for the natural world and the environment um, and making sure that I'm supporting natural systems and regeneration and that my actions are generating life rather than detracting from life. Um, so I think about that a lot in, in what we do and I feel really good about it. You know, I feel like asking that question, like, is my business tender to all of life? Is it, is it looking out for it? Um, and like, I feel good about supporting plant-based living and a more nonviolent way of, of eating and looking out for each other and caring for each other. Um, you know, promoting foods that are grown regeneratively and um, helping to cultivate the microbiota that live in that soil with those foods. Like it's not just about what we're harvesting, you know, it's about all of the other things that we're not seeing. Um, you know, not encouraging synthetic pesticides and herbicides to be used, you know, being a part of a movement that's actually like trying to rid the world of those things. Um, like even thinking about all of the steps, right, of along the way, like the cultivation of that food, but then also the harvesting of that food and um, the fact that that food is shipped dry to reduce the environmental impacts from shipping heavy refrigerated produce across the country in order to then process it somewhere else. You know, like that means a lot to me. <laughs> it means a lot. And then what that means is that food won't be sitting in your fridge requiring electricity while half of it rots, you know, you just don't get around to eating it. Um, you know, and then this idea of creating and supporting community based around this very premise of nonviolence, like um, it just, it spreads it further, you know, and it just, it really, when you start thinking about it, like, man, how nonviolent is my consumption? You know, what are the repercussions of my business? So that's where my mind goes. <laughs> mm. That made me want to cry. <laughs> literally just thinking about, you know, that simplicity of what you were saying is like having different systems of distribution and um, where it's reducing that carbon footprint and that you are, you know, just like the way that that's done, it's when dehydrated and it's preserving its enzymes and all of that, like that actually just brought me to tears because there's so much integrity there, you know, at every single level. Um, and when I think of nonviolence, to me, it starts with ourselves, right? This is the first place we can practice nonviolence. And to me, that looks like self-love um, and choosing, you know, to put a green drink in my body instead of um, something that I know is going to cause more inflammation in my body is an act of self-love, you know, that I choose over and over and over again. And it's okay if I don't choose that every time. I still love myself, but that action, you know, actions speak louder than words, right? So what are acts of nonviolence, acts of love that we can do on a daily basis, starting with ourselves and then starting to move out into relationship with everything else around us. And I do think that our food consumption, you know, speaks very loudly to this concept of violence or nonviolence and what that looks like at a cellular level. Um, and I know that's you know a, a unique journey for each person and I don't think there's a right or a wrong there. Um, but just for me, like my own integrity and cellular intelligence, I do feel when I'm eating food that has um, you know come from, from a, a state of violence, like factory farming or something. Like I actually feel that. I feel the 
the the hormones from that, like the <laughs> stress, the anxiety, you know, and and it really kind of hit me after many, many years of being um, plant based. And my friend gifted me, like made me something beautiful, made me a beautiful gift. Um, and it did have, you know, like factory farm cheese and such. And I literally felt the anxiety and the depression. And I was like, is this what people feel every day? Cause I hadn't had it, you know, in years. And it was just like night and day difference. And I was like, is this real? Like, is, am I actually experiencing this? So I experimented with it the next day, same thing happened. And I'm like, okay, is this real? I'm going to experiment one more time next day. I experimented with it. It was. Um, and then I started to notice like a numbing, like I didn't have, we get so used to things, right? Um, we're, we're so adaptable as humans at every level um, that we get used to things that maybe are not of the greatest benefit to us. And as soon as we recalibrate and get back to that place that really is in balance and in alignment with us and like listening to the, that subtle truth that's different for all of us we can feel with such greater (laughs) reverberance, you know, what is in alignment and what is nonviolence for us personally. And, and that's a profound practice, right? Because if we're in tune with that internally or at that cellular level or at that emotional intelligence level, that's going to ripple out into everything else we do. That's beautiful. Rita. Yeah, I think, uh, I think a lot about that is like, I didn't know what, I mean, I I would consider myself one of the healthiest people I knew. Um, And, and then I found these superfoods and I was like, Whoa, (laughs) this is a whole new level, you know, and then feeling like that compassion for, um, for people that don't even know that this is something that exists, that this is an option. And so when, yeah, say, thanks for doing that experiment. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I came outside because it was so nice, but there's so many distractions. Um, <laughs> and, and I would just like to add too, um, with the nonviolence is the plastic free initiative. Um, when I worked in the natural food industry, you know, in packaged goods, and um, I went to like a lot of trade shows, and I saw, I went out the back door once, uh, literally, to go, I was like trying to catch a flight. And so it was a huge trade show, like the biggest one of the year. And I think there's something like 70,000 people go to this. It's, it's really fun. It's like being at Whole Foods, but instead of the shelf space, like every brand has a booth so like you know for a natural food geek I'm just like oh I'm like fangirling like (laughs) Laird Superfoods like I'm really meeting the people um but so so much excitement around there and then I went out the back door and saw like crazy amount of packaging pallets and plastic and just like so much plastic and I was like wow and in an industry where there's so much um you know, innovation and passion for individual wellness, I was just shocked. Like how come as humans and as an industry and as leaders in an industry, this hasn't, this hasn't happened yet. This, this sustainable packaging hasn't been a thing yet. And so I saw that and it was like looking behind the curtain at Oz a little bit. And I'm like, oh man, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't unsee that. And um, so that was inevitably what, you know, made me step away from this amazing job, this amazing company. I I was like, I was just not, it wasn't feeling aligned with me. And it felt like um, it just wasn't, it wasn't for me, you know? And so when I stepped away and then, you know, I, I found this and the, the main part to me that really, that really hit home was the company's planning to go plastic free by 2021. I was like, how amazing, how are they going to do that? But wow, that's incredible that those kinds of initiatives are there. And to take, I know that's a challenge because I, I know from being on the other side of that, like how nearly impossible that is and how much effort and, um, you know, financial investment and innovation that's going to take to make something like that at this 
magnitude to happen. Um, but to have, you know, one of the pillars of this company be rooted in something that I feel so strongly about. Um, I, I just, yeah, it, it's, I feel so comfortable to share something this special and this, this, um, dedicated that way. Um, and that to me is one of the biggest pieces of nonviolence. Mm. Mm. So true, and powerful. And just to kind of like note on exactly what you're saying, Lindsay, I've been doing so much studies and research on indigenous rights and, you know, um, how BIPOC communities are so much more um, influenced by toxins in our, in our environment. And so much of that comes back to plastic pollution and also fossil fuels, you know? And so it's just like that one action, it not only <laughs> impacts us directly, but like so many people's lives and our oceans and our environments are impacted at a really deep level. Like cultures are impacted, you know, people's rights are impacted. So it's huge. <laughs> I think we could probably go on and on and on about this, um, <laughs> but I feel like that is a lot, um, a really great digestible amount of information, um, but maybe we should do a follow-up and do the other half. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> I would love that. There's so much more. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any uh, last drops of wisdom to kind of summarize all of this from you ladies? <laughs> I guess I would like to say something. Um, so this concept of space, creating space is a really like it keeps coming up for me and yoga is all about creating space in the body for alignment. And through that, there is healing. And there's all, like, it's so important to create space, right? Like we need to create space in our business for growth. We need to create space in our lives for self-care. We need to create space for, in our minds for, you know, growth and expansion for realizing new possibilities. We need to create space in our diets to eat more fruits and vegetables. Like it's so simple and it's so profound that like once we practice the creation of space for space sake, it translates into all other parts of our lives. And so I think I just want to just throw that like food for thought out there. Like, you know, think about what you want to create and think about what space needs to be freed up for that to exist. Um, yeah, that's, that's my last tidbit. Mm -hmm. So true. <laughs> I love that. I guess my little last throw in right now is just um, our daily practice, whatever that is, <clears throat> is so important and profound because it does cultivate us at a really deep level. And that translates into every single thing we do. So even if it's five minutes a day, having some sort of daily practice that aligns you, you know, with your deeper truth with that innate intelligence, whatever it is, you know, maybe it's meditation where you're just releasing thoughts. Same, same thing, like just making space for that, right? Because that is going to have speak really loudly into every other action that you do throughout the day. So I think that's what I'm most grateful for in all of this kind of practice that we've cultivated together. I love that. Both of those. Sam, the space talk. Oh, man. I really want to comment on that, but I'm scared I'm going to go off too far. So I think um, I think I would just, you know, 
I got really amped up before this conversation because I was like, I need to prepare for our conversation. And what did I do? I rolled out my sticky mat and I, you know, moved around a little bit and I got aligned and I remembered what's so important to me. And I let my head hang and kind of just allowed my body to feel everything that it's feeling. And I've noticed, you know, through, through a nutrition standpoint, how that's affected my yoga practice and how, you know, a consistent yoga practice that affects the way I'm treating myself and the people around me and my responses. And there's so, um, when we are nourished and we are taking care of ourselves, we are providing that same kind of loving care for one another. And I think this is such a great way, I think, to be building a business that is rooted in self-care and wellness. There's, I, I don't think there's a bigger gift mm -hmm. to be making a living. So it's mm -hmm. an honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love, I freaking love working with you ladies and your incredible teams and our incredible team and community and company and, you know, larger vision and mission. It's just powerful and profound. And, you know, I always think that um, we can't change the world alone, but when we come together in community, we can really move some mountains and this talk today definitely stirred me and um, made me feel really deeply, you know, and so just thank you, ladies. Yeah, thank you both so much. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your day. And I can't wait for the follow up combo. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Thanks, everyone for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.